Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be vulnerable. I'm going to share with you why my first and only toxic relationship I'll ever allow myself to be in was actually one of the greatest blessings that I've ever had in my life. So today's video, we're going to start out with a little story time. And we're going to flash back to, I believe, 2016. I was on top of the world. I had an amazing career in personal training and fitness, and I was just starting my own business and I was working for myself. I was making a bunch of money. I had complete freedom. I was in some of the best shape of my life. I began to go down the personal development path and the path was shown to me that I was supposed to transition out of fitness and start transitioning into just personal development, uh, more mental and emotional, spiritual developmental concepts, kind of like now where I'm of course at and my trajectory is on today. I was on top of the world and had made a bunch of money working for myself. I had started a podcast that I was about 65, 70 episodes into. I was in such a place of clarity and focus about what I wanted to do with my life, where I wanted to go and how I wanted to build it, what it was gonna look like, all these things. As I began this journey and I was podcasting, I was blogging, I was in the process of writing my first book. I went to this Halloween party event thing in Los Angeles and I ran into one of my old coaches that was a coach for this personal development program I had went through in LA and I never thought about her romantically at all you know anyways I'd saw her and we really connected and asked her to just hang out or she asked me to hang out or something like that I can't remember and so I hung out with her and it dawned on me when I was going to pick her up that I was like, oh, I'm actually going on a date with her. Like, this is a date. Oh, I didn't even think of it like a date. And I don't think she thought of it like that either until she got into my car and the whole energy and context of the meeting changed. And so we went out to a nice dinner. We started to date after the first week or so. We're starting to call each other, text each other. Anyways, it got really hot and heavy really quickly, which now, for me at least, is a big red flag and I didn't know it at the time. So we're going into this relationship together. I'm like, yeah, you're amazing. Oh my God, this connection is incredible. This is like an amazing love that I wasn't expecting, which is often how some things happen sometimes, right? You're not expecting these things. I'm just going about my business and I meet this woman who I had a past connection with and now it turns into a relationship. So it gets really hot and heavy. It's very passionate, super physical attraction and intense, but there's also this open-hearted vulnerable connection, this emotional and mental connection that we have based on the history that we had in this personal development program that we did. So it was like hitting on all cylinders. So at first, right, as many relationships like this do, because I've had some of them in the past, super intense for the first month or two, cloud nine, everything's amazing. Oh my God, I found the love of my life. We're going to get married, all this stuff, right? Yeah, I know, big red flags, crazy stuff. So I'm sharing the story with you to kind of give you the context about how the relationship went because it of course, I'm gonna share how it turned in and understanding how toxic of a relationship it was. We go into, I think, month like two or three, and now I'm coaching this personal development program and the way that she had coached me. So no coincidence, what a synchronicity there, and we're switching roles. She's not taking the course, she's graduated, she's removed, but she knows exactly what I'm going through because she was doing what I was doing, which was being a coach for this very intense like leadership personal development program. So she's super supportive, understanding because she went through it and knows what it's all about. And all of a sudden, to be clear too, when you're volunteering, when you're taking this course, let alone coaching it, your life is consumed by this and it's supposed to, it's designed by that because it's designed you to take you to your limits and show you where your gaps are in performance in your life and manifesting, creating what you want. And so all of your issues are forced to come up to the surface because the experience and the container is so intense. That's what it's designed to do is bring your issues to light. So I'm dating her and everything is going good. She's super supportive at first and my podcast is taking off and I'm like writing this book and I have all these goals and everything's happening so quickly and I find the love of my life, right? And then little by little, being so consumed with being of service to others to this personal development course, I 
was blinded by how toxic the relationship was or was turning into and about, and I, and I have to be mindful of my words because it wasn't that she was manipulative, actually she was, and I guess I have to call it how it was. I didn't realize that she was a narcissist and that she was clinically bi like diagnosed as a clinical bipolar depressive and that she had a lot of mental health issues I wasn't aware of because I was on cloud nine for a couple of months, right? This amazing, passionate, relationship that's hitting on mental, emotional, physical, everything, right? Spiritual. And so little by little, I noticed these little things about how she was treating me, her behavior was changing. And I didn't really see it because again, I was engrossed in this leadership program, but there were red flags that starting to pop up here and there, but I wasn't aware of them. One, because I had never experienced them before, especially with me being in such a clear and confident place with myself, I felt that I would be able to identify this. There were a couple of things that popped up that we started talking about and I started hearing through other people in the program about how when she was coaching as a coach, she was like on suicide watch because she was going through all this crazy stuff and yeah, all the things started to come to light and I'm hearing things from other people. Of course, I had my rose colored glasses on. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then the big red flag, the breaking moment where I broke up with her at first was she had gotten off work. I was living in Hermosa Beach at the time with my best friend. She had gotten off work and I guess she was taking lithium or some type of serious medication for her bipolar disorder or condition. And she had drank alcohol at work because she was a waitress in Manhattan Beach. She called me, she's like, I really wanna come over, I really wanna see you, and it was like late at night, and I'm like, you just got off work, I'm tired, I got stuff to do tomorrow, like just go home. She's like, no, I'm coming over, I'm coming over, and got really crazy with me, and I'm like, I can't believe I'm talking about it on this camera, but this is part of my growth, is about being vulnerable, right? And there's a purpose to me sharing and making this video for you, and we'll talk about that as the video goes on here. So she's like, I'm coming over, I'm coming over. I'm like, no, go home. I was like, I'm already like asleep, I'm tired. Like, I'll see you tomorrow, it's all good, it's no big deal. So she shows up in my apartment, she's like banging on my front door and I live in this little apartment complex with like, I think like six units or something at the time. And my neighbors downstairs have kids and the neighbor, they're like older and like, you know, it's a respectful, quiet little community and she's like banging on my door, let me in, let me in. I knew she was crazy right then. It all clicked and I was like, oh my God, okay, now I see what everyone's saying. I was like, go home or I'm gonna call the police. She's like, whatever, you know, starting to go nuts. Like she's out of her mind. She's on this serious medication. She drank alcohol, she's out of her mind. And then, so she's banging on my door. I opened the door, or I didn't open the door at first. And it turns out she was like banging so hard her knuckles were bleeding. I lived in a two story, or on the second story of this little apartment complex. So she went to the side of my apartment, jumped on the dumpster to jump on my garage, which my room sat above the garage that we have so that she could like come in through the window and she's about to break in my window. So I had to take the screen off my window, I know. This is crazy, I can't believe I'm talking about this, but vulnerability is a big part of my growth process, so here we are. Takes this, I had to take the screen door off, she takes her heels off and comes in through my bedroom window, and I calm her down, I'm like, okay, like this is, you know, in my mind already, like, okay, this is nuts, I just need to handle this situation right now, you know, calm things down, get her to go to sleep or whatever, and have her in her state, you know, move on, and then tomorrow, obviously, like breaking up with her and stuff. So I calm her down, and I think I had to calm her down. I'm like, chill out, it's all good. You know, like, we'll just go to sleep, whatever. She doesn't, she just came in to start a fight, essentially. She just wanted to start a fight and go nuts. Basically, all her trauma and stuff was coming out, or our unhealed stuff, and the medication had triggered it. She's like in this like wild, crazy, like bipolar state. She like takes her heel off and like throws throws it at the stuff, breaks a bunch of stuff in my house, and then I have this big window in my living room and she's like on her way out. I'm like, just go home, I'm gonna call you an Uber or whatever. She's like, no, I'm gonna drive, I'm gonna go and drive, you know, like suicidal talk, like I'm gonna drive on the freeway and crash into something. And I'm like, dude, okay, like now I see it. Oh my God, okay, this is nuts. This is the first and only crazy episode, by the way. So I didn't know anything about what who she was, I jumped in this relationship really quick and we just clicked on all cylinders, had a history and it seemed like it was great. I thought she was an amazing woman. And I shouldn't say that, she's still, you know, she just has her own stuff, like just like I had my own stuff, right? Unhealed, attracting this type of energy into my life. As on her way out, she throws her heels through, or throws a heel through my living room window and breaks this living room, there's all this glass everywhere. And like I said, I have little kids downstairs with their parents and neighbors in this like tight community. They hear this glass breaking, they're like, what is going on? I get her, I couldn't even get her to home. She storms out of my house and gets in her car, obviously all messed up. And I'm like, oh my God, like this woman's gonna hurt herself. I'm like, what's going on? So I'm calling her, she's not answering. And then calls me back in a later, she's like, I'm on the side of the road. 
you know, I, I can't move. I'm sitting here. Like, I don't know what to do. And I was like, just stay there. I'm going to like call the police or someone to come and help you. Okay. So that was the crazy ex-girlfriend experience that I've only one I've ever had in my life that I'll ever allow myself to have it. So I break up with her and I'm like, you know, like oh, you clearly have issues. You need to get help. I have my own issues. Oh my God. She wants to get back together, of course. And here's the thing, time goes by and I eventually do like a silly minded, immature person think, you know, she comes to me, love bombs me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I did that. Oh my God. You know, I'm going to get help. I just, you're an amazing person. I want to be with you, all this stuff. And I let her back in like a dumb dumb. I let her back in. Thankfully, no, no other crazy episodes like that happen, but she keeps doing these weird things to like undermine the trust and love in our relationship. Long story short, I break up with her, I get away from her, I cut her off completely, you know, she goes her own way. We've, we reconciled a couple later, years later, so I was just like, hey, I just need to be at peace and get closure, I'm sure you do too. You know, I need to forgive you in my heart for how you treated me and all this stuff. It's part of my healing process. She's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. And she was more level-headed then, um, had gotten help, went sober for like a couple of years. So anyways, that's my crazy ex-girlfriend toxic relationship story. So why was this the greatest blessing in my life? So this was the greatest blessing, one of the greatest blessings in my life because first of all, when these painful experiences happen, if we choose to, we can learn lessons that we will become, make us wiser. Those lessons can often transcend just that one area and teach us wisdom that we can apply throughout the rest of our lives, which I have done. So what were the greatest lessons that I had learned? Well, it first of all showed me the wounds in myself that I still needed to heal in order to have healthy relationships, not just romantic, but platonic, just healthy relationships with people in general about codependency, my need for love, and being able to now have the experience of what it's like to be in a relationship with a narcissist and experience narcissistic abuse and how that can undermine you. Because in the fallout of our relationship, I let her undermine my self-confidence and my identity coming from this on top of the mountain, I know who I am, I know what I'm here to do, energy to, oh my God, you know, I'm breaking down, my life is over, I wanna commit suicide, because I was suicidally depressed for a couple of months after and felt like I wanted to kill myself. I didn't realize that it was just the fallout or the residual effect from being in a relationship and narcissistically abused for a period of like, I think probably about eight months or so, eight, 10 months is, is this time period that happened. So it illuminated the wounds in myself that I needed to heal. That was number one. It also taught me the power of discernment and trust. Now my intuition, my discernment about how to read and understand people sharpened. It put me on a whole nother level and triggered a whole nother level of my level of an understanding of being an empath and empathy opened up and about how energy absorption works and about how uh, negative entities and demonic entities and possession and all these things happen because man, she had a lot of attachments. I took on a lot of those attachments because that's the thing about sex. People hook up randomly, but what you don't understand is sex, it literally stands for its sacred energy exchange. S-E-X, sacred energy ex exchange. So when you're having sex with someone, you're touching souls with them and whatever they have, you get that and vice versa. So they have some gnarly entities attached and you have sex with them, you're taking that on. This is why it's so important to be mindful about who you're intimate with, especially. So it showed me and it lit up a lot of areas in my life I needed to heal helped me sharpen my senses, learn lessons, and now I have experience and wisdom about suicidal depression, about demonic entities, about divine masculine energy and love, about sex, sacred energy exchange. It basically opened up so many things for me to heal and learn and understand now that I can share with others because I'm obviously well on the other side because this is what, like eight, seven, eight years ago, probably about seven, eight years ago, something like that. It also, it humbled me. Here I am, my podcast is growing, People are paying me thousands and thousands of dollars to life coach them. I'm writing a book. I'm on top of the world. I'm vulnerable, I'm powerful, I'm confident. But you know what I was lacking? Humility. I wasn't ready for success back then in a lot of ways because I wasn't humble. Now I can come from a humble place and a place of compassion and empathy, and most importantly, again, love and humility to help be of service to others. And so as I begin to ascend and see success in my life, this was the other blessing that 
experience was so painful, it took me to the point of suicidal depression that I'll never forget it. It left an indelible mark in my mind, my body, my soul, that I will never forget it. So as I go forward and I experience success now, I will always remain humble. Having this blessing of an experience to look back on, I will never forget it. And the other blessing is that now it gave me the experience and the wisdom to share with others because I've been through it. This is hard to talk about, I, obviously. I mean, I'm, you know, here I am, internet world, when I'm sharing a very uh, intimate and powerful experience in my life uh, with the world. <laughs> it also taught me about my self-worth and about how low of self-worth I actually had and what it means to develop self-worth because I thought I was all confident and like ready to go and take off. Clearly I didn't have, I hadn't healed my self-worth yet. Somebody with high self-worth just does not allow themselves to be treated or spoken to or even a, other people like that to be around them. So it also showed me that. These are, this is the reason my, this toxic relationship was one of the greatest blessings in my life because the last thing I'll say, and there's, I'm sure there's other things because there's other things popping in my mind, is this experience changed the trajectory of my life in a way that I've now been able to learn all the things, all the major things, and the learning never stops, the healing never stops, but it's taught me the major things I've needed to work on in order to be ready to share my story, my experience, and wisdom from that now and be prepared for the success that I am creating that's coming to me as a result. So why is this important to you? What does this have to do with you? This is, what's the moral of the story? What do I wanna share with you? Ask yourself that. Why is he sharing this stuff with him, with us, with me? And what's the significance as it pertains to my life? Whatever experiences in your life you go through, they are meant to shape you, they are meant to form you, they are meant to teach you powerful lessons and give you an experience that you are to share with others to be in service to others. So no matter what you're going through right now or have been through in the past, they happen for a reason and they were there to teach you lessons, to make you wiser, to humble you, to prepare you for the great life that you are now manifesting and creating. So don't ever look at yourself as a victim, look at yourself and the powerful, painful, especially the painful off experiences as opportunities to learn from, to grow from. Your pain is your greatest teacher and it's up to you to glean the wisdom and the insights after you've grieved and healed and done what you've needed to do to heal, to gain the insights and the wisdom so that you can share them with others to be in service. This is part of your story. This is part of your experience. This is part of who you are now. Now the quotes I will leave you with today, I wrote down two of them. The first one is, Turn your words into wisdom. Turn your pain into strength. Turn your problems into challenges. It's all about perspective. Yes, you got abused when you were a young child. Is that something you're gonna carry and as a chip on your shoulder and always use it as, as an excuse to hold you back? Or will you allow it to be part of your story to transform you into the powerful being you are and share the wisdom and the healing and the strength that you've gained from that experience in order to share it with others and to serve others. The other quote I'll give you, the most painful thing is losing yourself and the process of loving someone too much and forgetting that you too are special. So that's what happens in narcissism and abuse. It's a process of manipulation, taking all your energy, your identity, the love you have for yourself in order to bolster the ego and the mental construct that this narcissist has made. Love you guys so much. I hope that was powerful for, or I hope that was helpful. So let your pain transform you and be powerful learning experiences that you never forget. And the more painful the experience, the greater the lessons, the deeper the wisdom, the stronger you become. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.